Praise the Lord. Our topic this morning is a way in the storm. You know, God is speaking to us and he's saying, I am making a way. This whole year, and some people have already trodden in the new way that God has made for them. And if you haven't yet, today you have a chance. God is making a way in the storm. And we're going to read together Matthew chapter 14, beginning from verse 22. Matthew chapter 14, and we shall begin to read from verse 22. Together, immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and called him, You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Praise the name of Jesus. Give the Lord some praise. You know, the word is enough. If you just read the word, you go home with a message. You don't always have to wait for preachers to expound on the word to do the exegesis, to do all kinds of things in, for, in order for you to listen to God speak to you through his word. And it is important always to speak it out. There are times when I'm reading the Bible alone, but I am speaking it out. I read it out loudly. You may think I'm crazy. <laughs> or you may think... I am like those old people who don't know how to read well. There is a way in which they keep, you know, even when they are reading alone, they still read audibly. So this is an experience that the disciples had, an experience of a furious storm. We are talking of a furious storm. And these were expert swimmers. You cannot be a fisherman when you're not a good swimmer. And so don't, don't say, where is it written that Peter was a good swimmer? You see, you cannot be a fisherman when you're not an expert swimmer. So naturally, you have to swim just in case the boat capsizes, just in case the fish, the weight of the fish is too heavy for the boat, how do you get to the bank? And so we are talking of expert swimmers that experience a storm and the synoptic gospels actually clarify that they even 
you know, they not live alone crying out. They tried their best to contain the situation. They tried their best to contain the situation in vain. A boat is safe when it is on the water, but not when the water is on the boat. You don't want the, the water to get onto the boat. But Jesus comes walking on the water in a furious storm. And he's demonstrating that he is the Lord over all creation. Over all creation. And so there is no need to be afraid. That's what he told Peter. Why were you afraid, you of little faith? As if to say, didn't you know that I would be around? And I've preached before about jo uh, Lazarus in John chapter 12. I've preached before about Lazarus, whom Jesus raised from the dead. And the Bible says in John 12, I think beginning from verse 9, you don't have to stand there, that the Jews were plotting, the, the, the chief priests were plotting to kill Lazarus because on account of him, many Jews were putting their faith in Christ. Lazarus, it is not written that he preached any gospel in a pulpit on a podium, but he was a walking gospel and the chief priests wanted to get rid of the evidence of the works of the kingdom. You know, people were putting their faith in Christ because of Lazarus, the one whom Jesus had raised from the dead. But I said that Lazarus never feared death. Do you think he feared death? Not at all. Because you see, according to Lazarus, if you really want to kill me, go ahead. As long as this man is around, he will raise me up again. You see? If you want to kill me, go ahead. As long as Jesus is still around, he will raise me up again. And so there is no need to be afraid. And this is what Jesus is telling his disciples. Why were you afraid? Because I'm around. The God of all creation. Now Peter wants to prove that this is Jesus. Peter wants to prove that this is Jesus. You know Peter is always quick to do things. Quick to do things. The psychologist would attach a certain temperament uh, to sanguine is that called sanguine? They would attach a certain temperament uh, to Peter. Always quick to do things. Quick to promise. Quick to break the promise. Quick to sin. Quick to repent. Quick to promise. You know, quick to, uh, quick to quit. You know, he's even the one who led the disciples to go back to fishing when Jesus, you know, went back to heaven. And so he wants to prove that this is Jesus and not a ghost. And friends, there are going to be situations when you will doubt this Jesus that you have believed. If you have never doubted him, that you can be sure that time is coming for you to say, is this the Jesus I have believed? Where is he? You remember John the Baptist? The one who came to pave the way for Jesus. And he spoke about it. He said, I am not, I am unworthy. I am unworthy to untie even the, the laces of his sandals. I'm unworthy. I baptize you with water. But the one who is coming after me will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And then Jesus comes. And when he came, there was a divine connection 
John the Baptist was able to know that this is the Jesus. And when Jesus came, so that John the Baptist would baptize him, he said, no, not me. You are the one to baptize me. But you know that Jesus was baptized, he insisted, in order to fulfill all righteousness. And John the Baptist saw the Spirit of God come upon Jesus in form of a dove. He's the one who uh, re recorded that account. At some point he says, I myself did not know him until I saw the Spirit of God descend upon him in form of a dove. And when he saw him, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. By the way, the, 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 the correct word is sin, not sins. It's even printed differently in our, our order of service. Jesus came to take away the sin of the world. Sins. When you, when you talk of sins, you're talking of stealing, you know, you know, fornication. He came to take away the sin of the world. We need to correct it. But there was a time when John the Baptist was locked up. He was behind the bars. He was being persecuted. And, you know, he sent a message to Jesus. He said, you go and ask him, is he the Messiah? <laughs> is he the Messiah? Or, there is still someone who is yet to come. So those moments come. Those moments of doubt. And Jesus would still say, why did you doubt? And what was the response when the message arrived? Go and tell him that the blind are seeing, the lame are walking. In other words, I am still God, the God of creation. I am the Messiah. There is no one else that is yet to come. But God, uh, John the Baptist still lost his head. You know the story. So Peter wants to prove that this is Jesus. If you really want to know, we always attribute little faith to Thomas. But this man also had little faith. He also had little faith. But I also believe that we should always see an opportunity in every crisis. In every crisis, you should always see an opportunity. If you're writing notes, that's something you need to write down. And so Peter dared the Lord. And he said, if you are the one, command me to come. Command me to come. You must always be careful what you ask for. Lest it happens. Tell your neighbor, always be careful. Careful, neighbor. Tell them again what you ask for. Lest it comes. I asked the Lord uh, for a, a second class lower. I, yes, I asked the Lord for a second class lower. I was uh, at university. I was the, 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 the papa of Christian Union. I was so busy. I was like a pastor. I was preaching everywhere. And so I realized that um, I, I had lost quite a lot of time. And I said, Lord, now, I, I, I really don't want to get uh, a pass degree, a gentleman's degree, no. So at least give me a second class lower. That's what I prayed for. I'm being very honest. And when the final results came, I had missed a second class upper by point something. And the Lord said, this is what you asked for. 
So when I, was ask, when I was doing my master's degree, I asked him for a first class, and I was a top scholar. A top scholar. The records are there. The records are there. Ask Professor uh, Christopher Biaruhanga, who is the head of the postgraduate uh, you know, school in, at UCU. My, 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 my average GPA was uh, 4.83. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I was always scoring 90s, 90s, 90s. some semesters, 5.0, you know, 5.0. The, the worst was 4 point something, and, you know, even in the hardest subjects, like Greek, I, I got 81%. So, tell your neighbor again, careful what you ask for. But you must also watch what you call impossible. And so Jesus says, come. You have asked, bid me come if you are, if you are the Lord. And Jesus says, come. And this morning the Lord is saying to you, come. Come. And now Peter has no choice but to step out of the boat. But you see, friends, if you're ever going to walk on the water, then you must step out of the boat. Tell your neighbor, I am stepping out of the boat. I am stepping out of the boat. You can't do that while you are seated. Get up and say, I am stepping out of the boat. Do it, do it. I'm stepping out of the boat. In the name of Jesus. Because there is no way you are going to walk on the water if you remain in the boat. Now, a boat is a place of safety. You may be seated. A place is a boat is, is a, a, a boat is a place of safety. And most of us do not want to get out of our comfort zones. I was talking to a young lady who said to me that her boss was subjecting her to a, a kiss every evening. And she said to me, and he and his stinks. I'm using her words. And he stinks in the mouth. You know? And he stinks. You know, there are, there are people with bad order. Eh? Somebody has had dinner on, on, on garlic. Uh, in the morning, they, they, they drink garlic. Uh, I, I, you know, at lunchtime, he eats fish with garlic. And then in the evening, he says, hello. You know how... <laughs> so, and you're, you're like, oh, yeah. I pray. You know, even believers, you know, praise the Lord. Say, amen, amen. <laughs> and, and so I said, but why must you, uh, you know, do all this kind of thing? And she was a Christian. This is what I find. This is a paradox of life. And she was a Christian. So I said, why don't you just, uh, you know, tell him you can't do this. You're a Christian. She says, but I need my job. She said, but I need my job. A place of safety. You must get, you must step out of the boat if you are going to walk on the water. But you see, Peter would never have walked on the water, number one, if he never dared the Lord, and today you're going to dare the Lord. Number two, if Jesus had not bid him come, but most importantly, if Peter had not stepped out of the boat, if he had not stepped out of the boat, he was never going to have that experience of walking on the storm. And so, Peter's ability to walk on the water 
lasted for as long as he fixed his eyes on Jesus. Faith in Jesus is going to demand that you take a further step of putting that faith into practice. Faith without works is dead, the Bible says. It is not, it's not sick. It is not crazy. It is dead. But what is God telling you this morning? Uh, which boat are you in? And where does, um, where, 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 where is that boat? It could be in a form of religion. Some people are so religious. They cannot do anything that is outside the perimeters of their religion. Our good Anglicans will say, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. You know, it could be religion. You are baptized, you are confirmed, but you have never accepted the Lord Jesus. Yes, you want to be safe. You are sitting on secrets. You're sitting on secrets. You're sitting on secrets. There's a young lady who told me, uh, you know, she, uh, she's still counting, but, but by the time we last prayed, she, could, she remembered 27 men she had slept with. 27 men. And she said, I've never told anybody. And, and I said to her, this marks the beginning of your freedom and liberty. You see, 27 men. So I don't know which boat you are in. Sexual harassment for grades. This is what we call STD in tertiary institutions. Sexually transmitted degrees. But this morning, you are stepping out of that boat. Amen. Hallelujah. So always see an opportunity in every crisis. You can walk on the same water that has become a death trap for you. Amen? It could be an infirmity. The doctors have said it is over. It is not over until Jesus says it is over. Amen? You must never put a full stop. You must never put a period. Where God has put a comma, tell your neighbor, never put a period. Where God has put a comma. Never say never. Amen. Because whenever Jesus comes onto the stage of your life, of that situation you are in, the atmosphere will change. So Jesus bids this man, and Peter, by the way, you know, came out put his first foot, you know, on the water. It was as hard as a rock, yet the storms are coming. He put another, and he started walking on the storm. Hallelujah. And this morning, you're going to walk on the storm in the name of Jesus. Yes, for those who have hit rock bottom, for those who are caught up between the rock and the hard place, God is making a way for you in the storm. You are going to become a water walker. Somebody say, I am a water walker. Say it again, I'm a water walker. Say it like you mean it, I am a water walker. <laughs> Hallelujah. Point number two, by walking on the water, Peter became a history maker. Tell your neighbor, you are a history maker. This morning, you are becoming a history maker. Have you ever heard of some other person who walked on the water? Except Kanon Kasamba. Kanon Kasamba was teaching us, and uh, you know he's, he's uh, very humorous, the father of Peter Kasamba. He said he walked on the water in South Korea. So he said, are you sure? I said, yes, I walked on the water. And it turned out that during winter, there is a river that is frozen. <laughs> so he said, I walked, yes, I walked on it, although it was frozen. <laughs> so Peter became a history maker. Hallelujah. 
Now for me, I am a history maker. If you are not, me I am. My wife is here. Uh, she knows that I, uh, I was the first teacher at Kigese High School in a long time, the first teacher at Kigese High School to own a car. I was, I was driving. <laughs> I was driving. Yes, you know? Uh, we, yeah, exactly. I have a witness here. <laughs> Hallelujah. There was only one pickup truck which was for the head teacher, not for him as a person, but for the office. But I would come and drive and park next to, to his. I was the first teacher in that school in 1998 to own a cell phone, a mobile phone. And those days they were as big as a brick. I would, I would put it here on my belt, go to class, and I kept hoping and praying that somebody would call me. <laughs> you know, to interrupt my lesson. Sometimes nobody would call me. I was the first program officer for the healing, deliverance, and intercessory prayer for the whole of the Church of Uganda. That office had never existed. I was the first lay chaplain to the Archbishop in the entire Anglican Communion. I would put on a tie and hold the Archbishop's cross. He's coming this evening. If you doubt, you ask him. I was the first postgraduate student at Christian, Uganda Christian University to get a first class. I was the first ordinand to attract over 15 bishops, an archbishop, and all their wives to attend my ordination. The ordination of a deacon takes only one bishop. On my ordination, there were 16, and their wives. You know, you ask, you ask these, they understand better. You know, ask, they understand better to have 15 bishops coming to, with, all, going all the way to Kabale. Bishop Joel Obetia traveled from Marua. Bishop Stan Tagali, who was a bishop then, traveled from Masindi. People, uh, bishop uh, Kazimba traveled from Mitiana. You know, Bishop Paul Zinda from, they all gathered in Kabale and that history was written. That history was written. And so, watch this space. Yes. The, the, the first chaplain to be in, installed in, in, in power. In power. <laughs> Give the Lord a big hand clap. Praise the name of Jesus. And so for me, I am a history maker. Somebody shout, I am a history maker. Am a history. Say it again, I'm a history maker. Am a history. And finally, you are going to be the first. You are going to be the first, some of you. You're going to be the first to graduate with a degree here in Makere University in your whole family. Some of you, you are going to be the first to walk this aisle in your entire family. Amen. Some of you, you're going to be the first to board a plane and fly all the way to Canada in your family. In the name of Jesus. Somebody shout, I am a history maker. A history maker. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, finally, uh, number three, Peter became a cycle breaker. The, the, the normal way of of walking is walking on ground, you see? It's walking on ground, not on the water. Not on the water. And there are certain things that you have operated in because that's the normal cycle. Whether you like it or not, that is how things happen in your life, in your family. But today, you're going to break that cycle. Uh, if I had time, I would have expounded on that a little further. But I want to narrow it down to things generational, things hereditary. There are things that have existed in your line, 
in your lineage, on your father's side, on your mother's side. Today, you are breaking that cycle in the name of Jesus. Now, you write down these scriptures. Genesis 12, 10. If you're writing, write quickly, and then I'll explain later. Just write Genesis 12, 10. It's good you're a student, so you know how to take notes very quickly. Genesis 26, 7. Genesis 27, Genesis 37, 28. Um, yeah, that, that could be enough for now. Let me just tell you what is in Genesis 12, 10. Abraham told a lie that his wife was a sister. Genesis 12, 10. Isaac, his son, told the same lie. The same lie that his wife, Rebecca, was his sister, Genesis 26, 7. You see, a lie is a lie whether it is a white lie or a black lie. And it is a sin. Okay? So it passed from Abraham to who? To his son, Isaac. Now, Isaac's son, Jacob, stole his twin brother's blessing. I love twins. My, lo my wife loves twins. She kept praying for twins. They never arrived. They never arrived. But they also have issues. <laughs> they have issues. So, um, you know, then he, he gives, he gives, uh, you know, he produces his own sons. That's Genesis 37. You know, you can read from verse 28. You know, one of the sons of Jacob was Joseph. You know the story of Joseph. You know that he was sold for, you know, uh, he, was, he was sold off to the Midianite merchants. He, and, and what did the brothers tell the father? He, he, has, he was devoured by wild animals because they got his garment, they killed a wild game and soaked his garment in blood they took it home and said, Father, Daddy, Daddy, your son has been devoured by wild animals. And the Bible says the father mourned. The father mourned. And they also joined in the mourning. You see, lies? The name Jacob itself means deceit. Deceit. That's what it means. That's why when he had an encounter with God, God gave him a new name. The name Jacob means deceit. So you see that lie, generational, from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob, now to his own sons. I do not know what it is in your own line. It could be lies as well. It could be alcoholism. You know, and some people are proud to say, me, I'm like my grandfather, you know. For us, we are alcoholics. You see, I do not know what it is. Maybe your great-grandmother divorced. Your grandmother divorced. Your mother divorced. And now you also intend to get married. Maybe uh, your grandfather died suddenly in, during the war, you know, at the age of 40. Your, your, your father died of an accident at the age of, of 40, and now you are 39. I do not know what it is. But today, in the name of Jesus, you are going to break that cycle. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout, I am a cycle breaker. Say it again, I'm a cycle breaker. I am a water walker. A history maker. A cycle breaker. If you believe it, get up. If you believe it, get up. If you believe it, get up. And begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. That beginning today, every storm in your life, whatever storm it is, death, you know, academic struggles, uh, disease, every, I want, I want you to begin praying right now. That in every storm, you will seize an opportunity. To walk on that same 
death trap. God is going to turn your situation around in the name of Jesus. I need, I, I, I need you, uh, Arthur, I'm sorry, but you can also pray while you are playing something. It's time to pray, friends. Don't wait to be prayed for. Don't wait to be prayed for. I do not know the storm you are experiencing right now. But in every storm, God is creating a, a, an opportunity for you. You are going to walk on that storm. It could be confusion at your place of work. It could be harassment uh, from, from a boss. It, it, whatever it is, pray that God will enable you this morning to walk on your storm in the name of Jesus. Because Jesus is there. He's saying, don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. He's the God of all creation. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, pray, pray. Step out of the boat. Step out of the boat. Step out of that comfort zone. Begin to do what you've never done. In the name of Jesus. Yes. A good opportunity to pace. A good opportunity to pace. As you walk out of the safety. Walk out of that place of safety. In the name of Jesus. Get out of the boat. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. The word of God says what no eye has seen. What no ear has heard. What no mind has conceived. Is what God has kept in store. If you want to see what you've never seen. You must do what you've never done. Get out of that boat in the name of Jesus and walk on the storms of life. And Lord, I proclaim. I proclaim. I speak to somebody's life. Today, this morning, you are writing history. You are writing history. The people who said you'll never be somebody, they will live to see that God has changed your history this morning. God has changed your history this morning. In the name of Jesus, you are writing history. Father, I thank you that you are breaking every cycle, every cycle of addiction, cycle of joblessness, cycle of not getting married, cycle of um, curses that have been following these your people. We break those cycles. We break those cycles. You know every cycle that you're experiencing in your family. You know what it is better than me. Break it. Break it. Break that cycle in your family lineage, on your father's side, on your mother's side. Break that cycle. Come on, somebody, break that cycle. In the name of Jesus, break every cycle that has been following you. Beginning today, it ends with you. It will not follow your children. It will not follow your children's children. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are a cycle breaker in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Just repeat after me and say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I receive your word. Forgive me when I functioned in little faith. But today, in the name of Jesus, I am stepping out of my boat. I am stepping out of my comfort zones. In the name of Jesus, I am going to walk on every storm of life. In Jesus' name, today, I write history. It will be said about me. I will make news in my village, in my school, in my clan, in my tribe, on my place of work. I am writing history. I am a history maker. And this morning, I break every cycle that has been following me in my family, 
on my father's side, on my mother's side, the cycle of sickness, the cycle of infirmity, what killed my grandfather, what killed my father, will not kill me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I will live, I will proclaim the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I am not poor. I am rich. In the name of Jesus, I am not living under any form of curse. Jesus has lifted the curse. In the name of Jesus, every cycle is broken. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I give you the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.